Good evening and welcome to Quotes Today by Live Law. This is your host Urvashi Chahan bringing you the latest updates on the legal front. This is your go-to source for all things legal. Let us start. In an important update, the Allahabad High Court today dismissed the Gyan Vapi Mosque Committee's appeal challenging Varanasi Court's order allowing puja in Vyas Tehkhana or the southern cellar of the Gyan Vapi Mosque. Hence, the order of the district judge has effectively been upheld. A bench of Justice Rohit Ranjan Agarwal pronounced the verdict today, that is 11 days after reserving the judgment. As you already know, the appeal before the High Court was filed by the Anjuman Intizamiya Mosque Committee soon after the Supreme Court refused to urgently hear their plea against the order allowing the puja. The Masjid Committee had argued before the High Court that the Vyas Tehkhana was under their possession as being a part of the mosque premises and that the Vyas family or anyone else did not have any right to worship inside the Tehkhana. On the other hand, it has been the consistent stand of the Hindu parties that the Hindu puja part never stopped inside the Tehkhana and the same continued even after 1993 when the CRPF took possession of the same. The High Court has today dismissed the Masjid Committee's appeal. In a significant observation, the High Court also called the Uttar Pradesh government's action of stopping worship rituals inside Vyas Tehkhana in 1993 as illegal. The court said that the worship rituals were stopped by illegal action of state without there being any order in writing. In its order, the court also observed that stopping worship and performing rituals by devotees in the cellar would be against their interest. Also, the court rejected the argument raised by the Mosque Committee regarding a clash of interest between the office of the district magistrate and the receiver appointed by the court. In another important update, a division bench of Calcutta High Court comprising Chief Justice T.S. Sivang Nanam and Justice Hirandamai Bhattacharya today took up the suo moto matter registered by a single bench on the alleged atrocities which have taken place in Sondesh Khali, West Bengal, which included women being allegedly raped at gunpoint and tribal land being allegedly grabbed by members of the ruling government, including Pradhan of the Zilla Parishad, Shah Jahan Sheikh. The bench impleaded various authorities, including the state, CBI and Enforcement Directorate, and also directed the registry to issue a public notice in the newspapers regarding Sheikh being impleaded as a respondent in the matter due to him being on the run. The court also clarified that there was no order staying Sheikh's arrest. During the hearing, it was submitted that the women of the area were not confident in approaching the police due to their involvement with the accused. The court therefore suggested that their complaints could be registered by the District Legal Services Authority. You already know that problems in Sandesh Khali arose when a group of ED officials conducting an inquiry into a multi crore Russian scam faced an attack while en route to carry out a raid at the home of Shah Jahan Sheikh. The Supreme Court has today stayed the trial court proceedings in a defamation case against Delhi Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal to be temporarily halted. Charges of defamation have been levelled against Kejriwal for retweeting a video by YouTuber Dhruv Rathi's tweet on X. The video retweeted here made certain allegations related to Bharti Janta Party IT cell. Kejriwal has approached the top court challenging summons in the case. Today, a bench of Justices Sanjeev Khanna and Dipankar Datta heard senior advocate Abhishek Manu Singhvi appearing for Kejriwal. He admitted on behalf of the Aam Admi Party leader that the retweet was a mistake. So the court granted time to the complainant in this case to decide whether he was agreeable to the case being closed. And in the meantime, the trial court was instructed not to take up the matter. This case will now be listed on 11th March. Stay tuned with us. A bench of Justice Sujit Narayan Prasad of Jharkhand High Court has reserved its verdict in a petition filed by the former State Chief Minister Himant Sorin seeking permission to participate in the budget session of the Assembly which started on 23rd February. As you already know, Sorin was arrested last month in connection with a money laundering case linked to an alleged land scam case by the Enforcement Directorate. 
Senior advocate Kapil Sibbal, appearing for Sorain, argued that he was not charge sheeted in the case. He has been the CM of the state and nothing stops the High Court from allowing him to go and participate in the budget session of the state assembly. He referred to several judgments of the apex court wherein the jailed legislatures have been granted relief to participate in their respective legislative assemblies. On the other hand, additional Solicitor General S. V. Raju, appearing for ED, argued that it did not matter if he was charge sheeted or not, or is in judicial custody or police remand. It was sufficient for the court to refuse him permission on the ground that Sorain did not have a fundamental right to participate in the budget session. He also contended that generally, in such cases, a whip is issued for voting in the assembly and the members vote. And since Sorain's party has the strength in the House, the money bill will get passed and that no irreparable loss would be caused to him if he was not allowed to participate in the budget session. After hearing the arguments of both the parties, the court reserved the verdict in the matter. The Supreme Court bench comprising Justices Bela M. Trivedi and Pankaj Mithal today continued hearing the SLP filed by Tamil Nadu government against the order of the Madras High Court, which had put a stay on operation of the summons issued by Enforcement Directory to the district collectors under PMLA, while allowing the investigation in the matter to continue. The ED had issued the summons in connection with the alleged illegal sand mining money laundering cases. Last week, if you remember, the bench had questioned the locus standi of the state government to file a writ petition in the matter. During today's hearing, senior advocate Kapil Sibbal, defending Tamil Nadu government's standing to file writ petition, insisted that the collectors were not acting as individuals but as its representatives. He also objected to what he described as omnibus order issued by the probe agency seeking a wide gamut of information from the collectors. The bench today suggested that the state and its officials should help the enforcement directorate to find out if any offence is laid out. Further, additional Solicitor General S. V. Raju contended that the state was attempting to protect the accused and that is why it was getting agitated over ED seeking simple and innocuous information from the collectors. The hearing in the matter will continue tomorrow. Stay tuned. And now let me tell you the bench comprising CJI Chandrachud, Justices J.B. Pardavala and Manoj Mishra today heard the All India Judges Association matter, in which the court has earlier issued directions relating to pay and service conditions of the judges, accepting the recommendations of the Second National Judicial Pay Commission. Regarding the pension scheme for judicial officers, the bench today flagged concerns on the plight of the retired district judicial officers who were getting inadequate financial support through the present pension policies. The CGI brought attention to the dire financial conditions faced by retired district judges, emphasizing that they were receiving pensions as low as 19 to 20,000 after years of dedicated service. He pointed out the challenges of transitioning to other avenues at an age when they are physically unable to engage in active legal practice. He requested the Attorney General R. Venkata Ramani, who was representing the union in the matter, to provide assistance in coming up with a just solution for the retired judicial officers facing the setbacks of such a disproportionate pension policy. The AG, taking serious note of the same, replied that he would certainly look into the issue. The Supreme Court today sought response of Directorate of Enforcement to Aam Admi Party leader and Rajya Sabha member Sanjay Singh's bail plea in a money laundering case connected with the alleged Delhi liquor policy scam. A bench of Justices Sanjeev Khanna and Dipankar Datta today issued notice in Singh's special leave petition against the Delhi High Court denying him bail in this case and sought a response from the central agency that arrested him in October last year. Singh has also challenged his arrest and remand in the money laundering case in the Delhi High Court, but a single judge bench of Justice Sharma had dismissed his petition last year. After this, he moved the Supreme Court challenging his arrest. His petition before the Apex Court is also still pending adjudication. The same bench led by Justice Khanna is slated to hear the other special leave petition on 5th March. 
A bench of justices Bela Antravedi and Pankaj Mithal today heard the state of Andhra Pradesh's special leave petition challenging an order passed by Andhra Pradesh High Court by which regular bail was granted to the Telugu Desam Party President N. Chandrababu Naidu. Naidu was arrested in connection with this case in September last year by the State Crime Investigation Department and was in custody till he was directed to be released on bail in October last year. Now the state government has levelled allegations against Naidu and his family, accusing them of making disturbing and threatening statements against state officials. Advocate Mukul Rohtagi, representing the Andhra Pradesh government, claimed that the Naidu family has vowed retribution against officers of the state involved in the investigation against the TDP Supremo once the party assumes power after the upcoming elections saying that stated such threats should not be taken lightly, especially given the impending elections where the TDP is contesting, Rohatagi pressed for the cancellation of Naidu's bail. When Justice Trivedi expressed disinclination to consider any information not on record, Rohatagi informed the bench that the state government has filed an interlocutory application seeking additional documents containing the statements made by Naidu's family members to be filed. Senior Advocate Hari Salve, appearing for Naidu, sought for time to file a response to the state government's allegations. The bench then granted two weeks for the respondents to file their response. The matter was accordingly adjourned to 19th March for the next hearing. In a notable development, Senior Advocate Indira Jai Singh has written a letter to the Secretary General of Supreme Court citing concerns with regard to latest designation of advocates as senior advocates. Last month, the Supreme Court conferred senior designations on 56 advocates. It was after a gap of five years that senior designations took place in the Supreme Court. Further, this is also the first time that senior designations have been decided based on the modified guidelines framed as per the judgment passed by the Supreme Court last year in its 2017 judgment titled Indra Jai Singh vs. Supreme Court of India. In the letter, she has stated that some of the advocates feel that they were unfairly left out of being designated. To elaborate and support this, the letter has also cited that advocates with 25 years of practice and more than 50 reported cases as leading counsel have not been designated. While the letter does not make any observation with regard to any individual case, it also averred one opportunity for qualified advocates who were called for the interview but designation was not granted. For doing so, Jai Singh has suggested that the designating authority can review this decision and an opportunity for a fresh interview can be granted. The senior counsel has also suggested that the marks obtained by individual candidates can be disclosed to maintain transparency and that some of the high courts were already practicing this practice. And lastly, the Supreme Court today expressed displeasure at the trend of special leave petitions being filed against high courts, which merely issue notice or grant adjournments. In this case, initially, the petitioner had approached the high court with a prayer to quash an order while which his case for promotion was rejected. Last month, the high court issued notice on the same and stated that the matter required consideration. And it was listed for the week commencing 8th April. Against this order, the petitioner moved the top court. Before the bench of justices B. R. Gawai, Rajesh Bindal and Sandeep Mehta, it was argued that the petitioner had already been through one round of petition, which was disposed of. Later, he was subjected to a second round and the top court directed that the matter be considered by the high court and nevertheless, the hearing was posted to April. But the bench dismissed the petition and also imposed a token cost of 1 lakh rupees. It said that the court wanted to send a message to advocates on record and counsels engaged by them that frivolous petitions should not be filed. The bench remarked that petitions are time and again filed against orders issuing notice, granting adjournments, giving or refusing interim protection, etc. It further said that AORs are totally casual in their approach, acting as postmen, even though they and senior counsels owe a responsibility to the court as its officers. Thank you for watching. If you wish to know more details about the cases I mentioned here, you can visit our website at www.livelaw.in. Stay ahead with quick legal updates only on Live Law. Do not forget to like, share, and subscribe and support us. 
You can also support us by donating through the thanks button at the bottom of our videos or consider becoming a member at just 89 rupees per month.